In our study of the word, we are trying to accomplish three things. We're trying to know God's will. We're trying to know God's heart. And we're trying to get to a place where we do what God wants us to do effectively. So how can we do these things? By getting to know God more intimately. So the first thing we said was that we must fear God. So fearing God will keep us away from wrongdoing. It's a simple scripture, but it's a reality. It'll keep us from doing wrong. Then if we'll look at, let's read Psalm 25, verse 14. It says, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. And I'd like to read it in the Amplified as well. It says, the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere, and worship him, and he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. See, when you fear God and walk in that fear daily, getting to know him more and more through his word, God will begin to show you his heart. And what he wants, he'll show you what his ways are. It's such a wonderful place to be in. It's a wonderful place to live in. And then many of us, we love Psalm 91 and 1. It says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But I thought about a question. Who would want to spend time with somebody that you really don't know? And I don't think any of us do because it's very awkward if you don't know the person. So it's important for us to move to a place that we know God. It starts with fearing him, fearing, honoring, reverencing him. And to know his heart, you've got to spend time with him. Spend that time with him and you'll learn his ways. You won't be alarmed when things happen. So when suffering and sorrow knock on your door, you won't throw in the towel. You won't give up on God because you understand God's heart. You learn to bow to God's sovereignty. Let me say that again. You learn to bow to God's sovereignty. Sovereignty is where God can do what he wants, when he wants, where he wants, how he wants, and with whom he wants. So uh, when you get to know him intimately, you understand that there's no temptation that will come on you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 13 says there's no temptation that will come upon you that's not common to man, first of all. And then he said with the temptation, with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape that you can bear it. You're able to bear it. God won't allow you more on you than you can bear. And then in Isaiah 26 and 3, he says that you, you God, uh, Isaiah said, you know, God, you, you will keep their minds in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on them, on you, because they trust in God. So when you trust in God, God will keep your mind in perfect peace. But this only comes as you keep getting closer and closer to God getting closer and closer to him. You'll understand, watch this, what God permits, I have to permit. Yeah, because he knows best what we need. He knows what will break us. And God is not out to break you or me. Or, or me. So we have to just trust him. And when you get to know the heart of God, when you trust God, you, you, you let your heart safely trust him and watch this, when he can safely trust you, you know, you're looking out for his best interests. See, that's where God wants you to move to, that you want what God wants, and you're looking out for his best interests. So you look forward to spending time with him. You may not even have anything to say. You just want to be in his presence. You, it comes to a time that you get to know God so intimately, you won't be always asking God for something. You just want to ask God, what can I do for you, Lord? Because I love you like that. I see what you're doing. I love you like that. What can I do for you? So I say to you, fear God and you'll avoid evil. 
Fear God and he will confide in you and you will get to the place where God will use you to help bring people to him.